So if you actually start to use um, letters to represent the alleles, for example, here we're, we're going to use a big P for a purple allele. And so each plant always has two alleles. So this true breeding purple plant has big P, big P. And the true breeding white, pea, white flowered pea plant has a little p, little p. So the only gametes that can be produced by a big P, big P plant are big P, and the only gametes that can be produced by a little P, little P plant are little P's. So when these come together in the F1 generation, every single plant is a big P, little P. And so what type of phenotype is that? Well, it's purple flowered, right? And that's why he saw everything in the F1 generation was purple flowered. Then he allowed this generation to cross with itself, and so if you think about it, the only types of gametes that, the, the types of gametes that can be made from a big P, little P individual are half big P and half little P. And you can even think of that as being half of the eggs are going to be big P and half of the eggs are going to be little P and half of the sperm are going to be big P and half of the sperm are going to be little P. And you can actually, later on there was a man by the last name Punnett who decided that one way to visually demonstrate, show how the these um, these gametes can come together is through using a Punnett square. And so if you put the big P, little p, big P, little p on each side of this Punnett square, you see that you end up with a big P, big P possibility, a big P coming from here, and a little p coming from here, from the egg. And so you get a big P, little p possibility. The other way, we get a big P from the egg and a little p from the sperm, and so we get another big P, little p possibility. And then finally, you get the little p, little p possibility. Now, if you look at the phenotypes, you're going to have three then purple flowered pea plants to, for every one white flowered pea plant. So that three to one ratio, which is exactly the ratio that, that he saw. And as you can see, mathematically, you can figure this out. So we call this the three to one phenotypic ratio. And if you look at the genotype, so the actual letters here, then it is a one to two to one genotypic ratio. A one big P big P to two big P little P's to one little P little P ratio. And you know, you can think about this just simply as mathematics when you look at like rules of probability. If I have a coin over here and a coin on this side and I flip the coin on this side, half of the time it's going to be heads and half the time it's going to be tails. If I flip the coin on this side, half the time it's going to be heads and half the time it's going to be tails. And so if I flip them at the same time, there's a quarter chance that I'm going to get um, two heads. There's a quarter chance that I'm going to get a tails and a head and another quarter chance that I'm going to get a head and a tails, and there's another quarter of a chance that I'm going to get a tail and a tail, right? And so you can think about it kind of just like flipping the coins. And, you, and therefore, you can use mathematics to determine the probability of any outcome. And this is done by the probability of a compound event. It happens to be the product of each of the separate probabilities. So if I want to say, well, what's the chance of getting two tails? I can simply say, well, what's the chance of getting a tails in this event, and it's one half? What's the chance of getting a tails in this event, and it's one half? One half times one half is one fourth, right? Or 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25, 25% probability. Now, what would you do if you didn't know the genotype of a plant? So let's say that you had a plant that was purple flowered. Do you know whether it is purple flowered? big P, big P, or purple flowered, big P, little P? Well, you don't know, right? But what you could do is a test cross, and in one generation you could decide whether it was big P, big P, or big P, little P. So if I take that unknown genotype purple flowered pea plant and cross it with a true breeding white flowered pea plant, in other words, it is the homozygous recessive, homozygous means the same, the same two alleles here, heterozygous is whether they're different, and if I cross those, and if all of the offspring are purple, then I know that this was a big P, big P, because that big P, big P would be combining with the little P, little P's, and all of the offspring would be little P, big P, little P. However, if about half of the offspring are purple and half of the offspring are white, then I know immediately that I have a big P, little P um, parental P, purple colored pea plant. Now, Mendel took this further and started to look at two characteristics at a time, and even three characteristics at a time. So here we're going to be looking at round 
or wrinkled, round is dominant to wrinkled, or yellow, green, and yellow is dominant to green. Now if you were to just do this kind of based on what we saw before, we have a per true breeding round yellow and a true breeding wrinkled green, and if we cross those, we end up with a round yellow, right? And once again, all of the offspring are round yellow, but the genotype is going to be big R, little r, big Y, little y. Well, if you take that through to the next generation, sometimes people think that that would just be another three to one ratio, where I'm going to have three round yellows for every one um, wrinkled green, but that's not actually correct. And that's because the Punnett square is much more difficult in this case. It ends up being a four by four. Now, if you think about it, look at this individual right here. You have a big R, little r, big Y, little y. Well, what types of gametes can a big R, little r, big Y, little y make? Well, it can make a big R, it can give a big R, or it can give a little r. So I'm going to put a big R, and I'm also going to put it down here again, or it can give a little r and a little r. And the reason I have to do it four times is because the big R can go with a big Y right here, or the big R could go with the little y right here. And the little r could go with the big Y, or the little r can go with the the little y. So you actually have four different possibilities for the eggs and four different possibilities for the sperm. So you have a Punnett square now that is a four by four. And if you count these up, you end up seeing that you have nine yellow round outcomes, three green round outcomes, and three yellow wrinkled outcomes, with only one green wrinkled outcome. So a nine to three to three to one ratio. This also could have been figured out simply by doing the rules of probability and saying, what's the probability of getting a, a, a yellow? And what's the probability of getting a green? And what's the probability of getting a wrinkled? And what's the probability of getting a round? And you could have done those and actually figured out this is the, the probabilities that way as well. Now, in humans, we cannot manipulate um, human reproduction like we do in pea plants. And so instead, we kind of work backwards and we do what we do this by using pedigrees. So let's look at, um, we'll be looking at a pedigree here in a moment, but there are some characteristics in humans that do behave as a Mendelian inherited trait. In other words, it's a single gene and there it has an uh, either this condition or, you know, one condition or the other condition. And there's, here's a few characteristics. Uh, uh, examples of this, freckles, no freckles, widow's peak, straight hairline, free earlobe or attached earlobe. <clears throat> and so in this family pedigree, we're actually going to be looking at a characteristic of deafness. Now there's lots of types of deafness. We're going to assume this particular type of deafness is controlled by a single gene. And so if you are um, the dominant gene is, is to be hearing, the recessive gene is to not hear, to be deaf, and we're going to represent females by circles and males by squares. So let's look at this family. Here we have Jonathan Lambert and Elizabeth Eddy. And we can determine their genotypes if we quickly look at this. So Jonathan is colored in, so what would he have to be? Well, in order to be colored in, that means he's deaf. In order to be deaf, you need to have both homozygous recessive um, genes for deafness. So that would be a little d, little d. Elizabeth, on the other hand, is hearing, so she has to have at least one big D. But what would be her other allele? Well, if we look at the children, we see that they actually have children who are also deaf. Oh, right away I know then I could assign their genotypes, little d, little d, and little d, little d. So therefore Elizabeth has to be a big d, little d, because she's all, these children are only going to get one allele from dad. The other allele they have to get from mom. And so mom has to also have a little d. So the rest of the children, we know that they're getting a little d from dad because that's all he can give. But they're all hearing, so they're getting the big d from mom. So they're all going to be big d, little d. We could go over to these grandparents and say, well, I know that they both have to have little d's at least but they're both hearing, so they're both going to be big D, little d's because Jonathan has two little d's. The sister over here, Abigail Lambert, we don't know what she would be. She, we know that she's at least a big D because she can hear, but we don't know whether she got a little d from one of the other parents. The two grandparents are similar, that they had a child who is a big D, little d. So they, we know that one of them at least has to have a little d, but we don't know which one, and so we would just represent this by doing a d slash or a d question mark. And that's how you do a family pedigree.